Welcome to Tucson Sailing. I'm in the middle of refurbishing a 1984 Seminole boat trailer to be compatible with a 24-foot shoal draft sailboat. Today, I'm going to be removing the springs and suspension so that I can work on the brakes and replace everything with new parts. So the springs are on there really, really well, um, and the the U-bolt that holds the axle on is just as well tight, just as tight. Um, I don't have the tools to take those off today. I tried using the tire iron, but it's, it's metric and not quite the right size, and I'm just going to screw things up when I try that. But I got a friend with an impact hammer, so go bigger, and we'll, we'll get those off eventually. The bolts that hold the springs on the trailer have, are really big and have really big threads and by hand I was totally unable to break them or, or unscrew them at all. But I was able to borrow one of my co-workers impact hammer and that works really really well. Uh, I got a couple off last night before the battery died and I had to, had to go charge it overnight. Today I'm fighting a bit of a cold and it's supposed to rain soon so I'm going to be racing all of that in darkness um, but I'm going to see how many of these I can get off tonight and to keep pushing forward. So these are the bolts that I'm taking off right now. And you can see just how absolutely massive those those bolts and screws are. And they're totally fused and welded. I mean, not welded, but totally fused from the rust. Um, so getting those off is, is nearly impossible by hand. Maybe if I had a, a pipe on a wrench, you know, a big four foot long pipe or something for purchase, I could do it. But the impact hammer makes really short work of these so it's quick, quickly becoming my favorite tool. This is the bolt that I was unscrewing when the battery gave out on the impact driver and even though it's halfway off if I put a socket on that I can't budge it at all by hand so we'll see how Mr. Impact Driver does with it. Done. So that one started to spin freely with the impact driver. And at that point, I can just barely get it off by hand. Those were just totally caked in rust.
So that's all eight nuts that I have to get off of this before I can pull the pins and get the springs off, all four springs independently. The impact driver is great. The only, the only problem with it is that it's really, really loud. So I'm trying to do this during the day and there's not a lot of neighbors here because if I did this late at night or even during dinner time, someone's gonna complain. So at this point I've got all eight nuts off, but I discovered after the first two that I took off that some of the bolts themselves, the heads are, are almost welded on with rust. So now I'm gonna to switch to the next size smaller bit and go around and spin those bolts just to make sure that they're broken free before I try and hammer them out. A couple of these are really well stuck in there uh, and are only just barely turning with the impact hammer. So I'm going to try putting the ha impact hammer on one side and banging on the other end just, just to try and get the bolt to move some. If at first you don't succeed, try a bigger hammer. What I'm going to end up doing here is peening over this bolt so it won't come out. That's really what I want to avoid. But man, is it still stuck in there. Huh. I'm tempted to try and cut these out. But even if I sliced it down the middle, I, I think I'd still have trouble getting the bolt out because it's the bolts just seized in there. There were at least two bolts on the springs that I was unable to get out. And well, a lot of people a lot of people have said that if you use heat, a lot of times things that are rusted you can use to get them apart. So if you heat it up with a map torch or something, you can go ahead and pull the bolts out. But in this case, because I don't need to reuse the bolts or the springs. And there's quite a bit of play between the spring and the uh, bracket that attaches it. I think I'm just going to pull the spring over to one side and cut, cut through the bolt and then pull the spring to the other side and cut through the bolt on the other side. And that should let the spring just drop out. The whole assembly is pretty heavy and since the spring is going to fall as I make that last cut, I'm going to go ahead and detach the axles from the tops of the springs. They're just held on with U-bolts. There's eight U-bolts total. Those, like everything else, are, are pretty well rusted on. And I'm pretty certain the impact driver would get them off, but I'd have to wait until I had the springs off and could flip them over to get clearance to use the impact driver. And since, again, I don't need to reuse those U-bolts or the springs, and there's a really good place to just get in there with a cutoff wheel, I'm going to try and, and cut those off before I drop the springs. It's worth noting that I didn't cut that. That just fell off. This particular spring doesn't have anything holding it on, other holding it up other than this U-bolt. When I cut this last piece, it is gonna fall off. If I do it right, it won't fall off on me.
I've only actually ever once caught myself on fire with an angle grinder. But it's a good idea to stop every once in a while and check to make sure you're not smoking anywhere. All four axles are free. I just got to prop them up off the springs and then I can go in and cut the few spring bolts that I have to. Judging by how easy those U-bolts were to cut through, this shouldn't be that bad. So I've got the axles propped up now. This spring has clearance on at least one side to go in and get the, get the blade in there from the angle grinder. So I'm going to cut that side and then see if I can shift the spring over to the other side and, and cut the other half and that should just drop the spring off. When I cut this side, I had a lot of clearance on the spring. This side, the spring's right up against that washer right there, which is going to spin if I try and cut it. So I can either use progressively more force to just try and force the spring across to get enough clearance to cut there, uh, or I could just cut through the whole thing kind of close to the edge, and that may free up enough of it I can force it out. So that completes the suspension disassembly for this Seminole tandem, tandem axle boat trailer. I've got to get the brake job done on the forward axle, and then we've got new springs, we'll put them on. So tune in next time for some brakes or some more suspension work.